Hello there, my name is Lanius and today I'm going to take a look at a very handy little tool and yes, it is AI again. I promise I will move away from this topic at some point, but here we go. So, I've already talked about Olama, so-called and rightfully so, Docker for AI models, shown how it works, even written some experimental Olama clients, but this time we'll take a look at something that is actually usable. So at first I was planning to make a video about anything LLM, anything LLM, which is a very cool program and, and all. It supports many different models and is very powerful, but if I'm being honest, it seems even too powerful for my AI use. So I might present it at some point, but I prefer showing things that I actually use because sometimes a tool looks very cool, works very cool when testing, but when you start using it, it reveals some deal breaking issues. Of course, I don't suggest that anything LLM has <laughs> these issues. It just seems a bit an a bit of an overkill for my usage. But there is something that is just simple and useful enough that I think might really come in handy also for you. So, page assist. That is very unassuming name and suggests it's going to assist you when viewing pages and it kind of is, but not really. The assist feature works kind of fine in Vivaldi, yeah, and I also discovered how to make it work in, in Chrome, so I will show you that, but it's not really that useful, if I'm being honest, but let's get to the things it can do. So first of all, it can be installed, let me show you, let's do guest mode i wonder if i can install things in guest mode but we will figure it out in a moment uh, not being let's do start page what anyway so page assist page assist google.com Page assist. Yeah, here we are. So it's a web UI. And I can do shit. So I created like some uh, new profile in Chrome and let's do it like this. Because I tried to use <laughs> guest mode in Vivaldi, but it doesn't work because you can't install anything in guest mode, which makes perfect sense. So let's do it like that. Add to Chrome, add extension. As you can see, it supports only Olama and it is everything we need actually. So let's pin that here. Let's click here. And as you can see, Olama is already running. And otherwise, it would have an information that it isn't. But so, yeah. So, since it's a, a Chrome extension, it would of course work with any. A Chrome based browser, which is the majority of browsers right now. And yeah, well, let's, let's configure it. So we have some options here, but the most important thing, oh well, yeah, we can set the search engine that it's supposed to use because it can search, but I will, I will, hmm, I don't want text to speech what is interesting 
is here. We need to set a model. Like the embed models like kind of are like hmm, recommended, but I didn't really have a good time using it. I just use the same model as I use for for the poking, let's say. As you can see, you can also customize the prompts here. But we leave it at that. Let's go to Llama settings. So it's fine because it's like the 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 default. And I don't think we're changing anything here. We will just go with the defaults. But we need to select a model. I'm using Dolphin Llama 3, which is like uh, uncensored. Uh, llama tree it's also 8 billion so it's not the biggest because we actually want it to work quite you know fast so okay so we have llama running we have it configured actually the most we had to do was just uh, setting the embedding model because we can choose the model we actually use in the chat in the chat itself so that's that so now let's ask some basic questions like um, ideas for software projects in python So yeah, as you know, as you see, it's like quite standard. Mm. I actually used ChatGPT for that when I was learning uh, Clojure because it just gives some random ideas and sometimes they stick, let's say. But mm. That's funny it's suggesting this because I wanted to ask something like I will show you in a moment. So another let's like some live a question not only nerd things so gifts for seven year old gift ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like some typical standard answers, let's say, but I guess every one of them is quite fine. So another thing, let's, oh yeah. Uh, I said that it's funny that it, it's uh, it's suggesting this because one of my questions that I planned to ask was Python script to check the weather. I mean, let let it create a Python script to check the weather, and it goes with the Open Weather Map API. So. Of course, I'm not going to test this because I obviously don't have an API key. But as you can see, it it gives you some, let's say, advices with software. It gives you some generic like um, ideas about pretty much anything, like <laughs> ChatGPT would, and it can also generate code. So. It's kind of fine and now as you might have already spotted there is this search uh, tag box search tick which allows the page assist to search the web when responding so let's try this now so let's make let's ask maybe some quite specific question 
which I actually mm, I actually was doing that uh, yesterday, but actually without the without the help of 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 AI. But let's see if it responds with sense. So it's searching the web. I've selected it to use Google. It's hallucinating. Or... Hmm. I'm wrong. Let's see that. Oh no, it's from the... Uh, from Dev2. And that's the same link. And this page is not found. And what do we have here? No way. Mm. Can I get a dark mode? <laughs> Smart red goes over separators uh, key bindings. So yeah, it gives like the right example of the, the code here but the search the page assist here or maybe the model doesn't really pick this up because it could actually just use this because it's correct so not very impressive but also i wasn't very you know mm, I wasn't very sure that it would actually uh, work like with such a specific thing. So now maybe something else. What is the best NeoVim theme? Because for sure there are articles about that and there is some uh, response to that on the web. So. Hmm. Okay, it gives some links, but uh, are these really NeoVim teams? Okay, there are. There are some programming teams to their respective GitHub repositories. I mean, it's nice, it's giving the these URLs there, which which don't work. <laughs> What? Oh no. I really thought it would be better. What do you have here? It literally lists... Okay, it has this, this one dark... But the URL was wrong anyway. Why? Did it like hallucinate Folke with someone else? Folke is the Fol or Folke is the author of Tokyo Night, on which my NeoVim theme and also Emacs theme, by the way, is is based kind of inspired uh, so yeah there are some and yeah so it didn't mention any of this which kind of sucks I think it should at least like give right URLs what the fuck is this I'm kind of 
irritated. Search repositories. I don't think it exists. No, it exists, but it made up like the whole name and also the author. So that's fully uh, just, you know, hallucination. Another thing. How do I install Emacs on Windows? It should be fun. I mean, it's very not fun to do, but I wonder if it has any... Um, is this URL working? Is this URL working? Why it cannot even... can't even give you the right freaking URL. What the fuck is going on here? So it basically says to download uh, the file from imaginary website and run the exe file to install, which is actually true, I guess. But the site is like, it doesn't exist, but... I would have thought that the search would actually help with the answers. It actually links to the right answers. It links to really right answers. But it doesn't seem to know how to use them. But it might be on the model actually. Let's not say I, like the page assist does something wrong. Because it for sure finds the right answers on the web but for some reason it doesn't really like use them to answer the question you know what let's try this again but without the search will it suggest something else will it actually give some existing urls no It just did the same thing. So it might be just some weird thing about the model. I guess maybe with the prompt we can instruct it to, you know, not make up things if it doesn't know. Because it just gave some things that seem right, seem true, but they are all bullshit. So another thing. Best Obsidian Plugins And with this I guess we will finish this, you know, uh, looking here mm, I wonder, are these all like Fictitious. Yep, not found, not found, not found, not found. It just makes up some of this, these plugins that are there just actually like uh, built in Obsidian functions. So it assumes these uh, functionalities are plugins and it makes up some URL so I guess we could try another model maybe for that but you know it's like hit or miss I thought and I still think that Dolphin Llama Tree is quite 
quite okay, but hmm, but maybe some you know better like prompt settings might be advised so it doesn't make shit up. I wanted to say, whoa, it's like uh, like you know uh, Google's Gemini, but good, but well, mm, no, <laughs> no, it isn't. So now let's try the actual page assist feature, maybe with some article, or maybe let's go one of the the pages it found for us and let's do um, open copilot to chat they really like to use copilot i mean the word everything is a, a copilot and yeah so let's uh, summarize the page for me So it doesn't really summarize the page, it just looks that oh it's, it's Emacs, so I will tell you about Emacs. Not really that useful I would say. Mm. So let's try some article. As you might spot, it's one of the articles that Primogen was reacting to. I mean, reacting. <laughs> Do you react to article? He was uh, reading it and commenting, okay? So let's see what the page assist has to say about this. So it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. So it it told me about the website, not about the article. Maybe, hmm, maybe it's somehow like restricting the access that it doesn't like read these things. But I don't think that you know, Emacs docs would be. Uh, like restricting access like this so it should have just worked so anyway huh. I really was going to you know say all the good things about page assist but it just made some stupid ass things here as you can see but I would blame it on the model not specifically on the extension because as you can see it's really nice. Maybe the search isn't really that good because it doesn't really help the 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 results. But hmm, maybe let's try some other model. Maybe Mistral. Let's let it search the web and let's ask again about the best new of him team and if it doesn't link correctly to Tokyo night we're finishing with this one <laughs> okay hmm why does mistral say basically the same thing As the previous one. Is it caching something? Let's try this like that. In the console. Maybe it has the same... I don't know. Mm. I don't think it really switched. Uh, switched the model. 
because it wouldn't have context or does it? I don't know. Let's try a new chat with Mistral without the context because maybe it's just getting the context and mm, okay mistral like actually analyzed the response the search results and maybe it's more more useful i mean it mis misunderstood and just get the title and yeah it says that one dark is highly mentioned what is it not really i mean okay there is one dark but it's mentioned like one time And here it's Katpuchin, it's Tokyo Night, it's Kanagawa, it's Night Fox, it's Rose Pine, and it's One Dark. So maybe it have seen it two times, and and yeah. And anyway, I think Mistral did maybe a little better here, but also not very. Hmm, not very good. So maybe I need to like find some better model, I guess, to talk to. So, it was a long time that we haven't had a video where I was presenting something and it just didn't work the way I expected. So, welcome back. <laughs> so as for the uh, page summary thing, I had situations that it didn't really pick up what website it was and it started like describing some random thing and I believe it was when I set up the embedding model other than the one I'm using and it was like describing some random thing instead of the website. Here we didn't get really that good of a result but at least it knew what website we are on, okay. So, okay, I forgot one other thing. I almost forgot. Because I have it written down. And it allows you to download Olama models. Because, you know, it's connecting to the Olama API running locally. And so it can control the the Olama instance, so it can, you know, I mean, it can quote unquote talk to the models and give you the responses, but also since it's working on the API, it can also download new models. So let's see what we can do here. So we can download the model. I don't think it is even mentioned on the page that it has this capability. But it has. So let's download this. And let's wait. Oh, it even is showing the yeah so that is a really cool feature because not because you know you go there and you know the model doesn't really do the things you wanted and you think jesus i, I would like to test something else and you don't need to go to the terminal you just go to the olama page click download wait a moment or maybe a few moments depends on your uh, on your internet and you get the new model that you can test 
So, we got it. Did we? It's 100%. Is it finished? Do we have Gemma? Not yet. I guess now we have it. So yeah, we have Gemma, Gemma latest. So let's try something. Mm, gift ideas. Let's do the gift ideas. And let it search the, the internet. Okay, is it like existing toys? Okay, okay, it actually just got to a page that's selling toys. Hmm, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Actually, this this model quite no worked. <laughs> mm. So yeah, it suggests me Amazon UK, some toys uh, site store, and some other ideas. So yeah, I guess in the end, the better model gives better responses. I really was uh, convinced that the, doll, the, the Dolphin Llama 3 is the really great model, but maybe, maybe not for everything. And I guess the Google, the model created by Google will be more like, you know, um, focus on, on, on these things. I don't know, I'm talking out of my ass right now. And I guess it's, it's enough, it's enough. So, uh, I was going to give like a very, very good review to this, but... Uh, with all the hmm, hiccups we had I'm not really sure but that's more the issue with the models and not with the page assist because the interface I mean it is the interface it has some settings which might really come in handy now making like the changes uh, for the uh, for the questions you are you are you are you are you are sending and and yeah i think it's really cool so i think that it is a really good alternative to chat gpt especially since it's r running locally so it's more private of course it is more flexible because you can use any model you you want at least any model that works with with olama and the interface is really good and if any problems have you know happened here it was because of the models, not because of the page assist itself. And you also have the option to search the web, which varies how useful it is, but it varies on the model. Not that this feature is bad or it's working badly. You just have to use 
a model that actually works well with that. Mm. Yeah. Also, maybe some fine tuning with the uh, with the configuration would make some more sense. And I also think the uh, option to actually install uh, more models from Olama site and in the settings you can actually just remove or update the models. It's really nice. It's really, really nice. It's like the best interface to Olama I have seen. But maybe it's not really fair because like most of the interfaces for Olama I have seen were the ones I've written myself and they sucked, so... Anyway... Oh, another thing I wanted to check quickly. If there is something like that for Firefox. Because I'm sure there are a lot of, of people that would like Firefox. More than... What have I been saying? Would prefer Firefox over Chrome and Chrome based things. And it seems that it is there. It exists for Firefox. And no, I would you, you would need to check if it really you know implements the same things that the Chrome one does. But the description is like copy paste from the from the Chrome Web Store, so I really think it it works just the same, if not better, because as you know, Chrome is more limiting to the stuff you can do in the browser in the browser than Firefox is. So it's nice. I guess I, I will link uh, both of the extensions in the description for you to see to check. And I guess that will be all for today. This video was a little mess, so more like my old videos. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.